Shabbat Shalom and happy pride. Today we are, is the first day of June and today we're celebrating our second ever Pride Shabbat here at Bethel. This year, family has been on my mind, especially expansive and chosen family. I have learned through my own experiences here and in Israel, through Jewish texts, and from seeing life here at Bethel, that family is bigger and broader and stretchier than how we might think of that word or that idea. My partner Karen and I found this expansive notion of family this past weekend at Bethel's family camp, which was held at a Jewish summer camp in Oxford, Pennsylvania, which if you haven't been there, is the kind of rural town where you drive by three roosters on the side of the road kibitzing, and it's, doesn't even, no one even blinks because that's just normal to have roosters on the side of the road. We joined, we, we were there for our second year, and Benny Zahav, our little rescue chihuahua, has anyone met Benny? A lot of you have met Benny, okay. Benny Zahav was there for his very first time. And he pranced around in all the mud and the dirt all weekend, and he enjoyed the boisterous children who took turns petting him as gently as they could manage. Benny became very popular, and by the end of the weekend, he was even dubbed the family camp mascot. So I think that's very successful that in his first time, he became the mascot. One night, I was walking Benny before dinner, and one of his fans ran over. This was a seven-year-old boy who was so excited to see Benny, he was practically shaking. He had approximately 1,000 questions about Benny. Does he like to run? Does he eat carrots? Does he poop? Yes, yes, and yes. That's a yes. By the time we finished our walk and we arrived back at the dining hall, the sun was a little lower in the sky. It was a nice long walk. He asked me, who walks Benny usually? And I had to be honest, and Karen will be polite about this, but usually it's Karen. So I said, Karen does most of the walking. And then he asked, who is Karen? And I answered, my partner. And I pointed to her, I can even point to her now, she's right there. She was, at that point, she was, she was approaching us. She had a small bowl of blueberries for Benny, which is one of his favorite snacks. So I, I, I pointed to Karen, she smiled and she said hi. And the boy was a little confused. He sort of looked back and forth at both of us and I could tell he was confused. So I clarified, she's Benny's other mommy. And then he got it. Partner, maybe not so much. Other, Benny's other mommy, that, that makes total sense. Benny has two mommies? Yes, Benny has two mommies. One of the great blessings of a long weekend like this is exactly this kind of sweet, open, free-flowing conversation. It's the kind of conversation that allows a kid to hang out with his rabbi and her dog and then to figure out what her family looks like. Our family is configured differently from the other 25 or so families who were on the weekend, all of whom, the others, all of whom had children and all of whom, except one, were straight couples. But we always felt seen and appreciated and loved from the first moment we arrived, actually. We noticed that our cabin was decorated with a sign, one of those um, welcome, colorful signs, big handwritten sign, welcome Rabbi Megdal and Karen 
and Benny Zahav. Just like all the other families, we got a welcome sign. We talk a lot about inclusion, but this is a very simple example of, that the, of knowing that the details matter. They matter enormously, and this sweet sign really made our day. This idea of expansive family is neither radical nor new. It's really not. We can look to the biblical story that we will read in just over a week for Shavuot for another example of expansive family. Naomi and her husband have two sons. Their little family experiences a famine in Bethlehem. So they immigrate to Moab. Eventually, her husband dies. And her sons, they've married local Moabite women, Orpah and Ruth. About 10 years later, they are still in the time of famine. And by this point, her, her two sons have died as well. So she finds herself, this is Naomi, thrice bereaved. She's lost her son and both her, her husband and both of her sons. And she's holding together this family made up of herself and her two daughters-in-law. And she hears some good news that there might be food back in Bethlehem. And so the three of them begin traveling together. But quickly, Naomi begins to doubt that these three women are really uh, an authentic family. They're unrelated by blood, and their only connection is through their husband and their, their, all three of their husbands, really. Their only connection is through them, not through, living hus not through anyone living or not, and not through children. So the, in this exchange, which I'll read from the first chapter, it's, it's a well-known exchange, but I want us to think about it in the lens of expansive family. Naomi said to her, her two daughters-in-law, Turn back, each of you, to your parents' house. And she kissed them farewell. Go back to your original family. They broke into weeping and said to her, No, we will return to you, to, to your people. But Naomi replied, Turn back, my daughters. Why should you go with me? Have I any more sons in my body? who might be husbands for you. She's thinking that the only way that they would be a family is if she could provide them with more sons, if they could have men involved, if they could have husbands involved. But, but notice she's still calling them daughters. She says again, turn back my daughters. They broke into weeping again. And this time Orpah kissed her mother-in-law farewell. But Ruth stays, Ruth clung to her. And she said, do not urge me to leave you. It's enough of this, she says. To, do not urge me to turn back and not to follow you. For wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God shall be my God. Where you die, this will be lifelong. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. This will even extend beyond the span of our lives, this bond that we have. When Naomi saw how determined was Ruth to go with her, she ceased to argue with her, and the two went on until they reached Bethlehem. So Naomi really realizes, she's convinced by Ruth, that they are truly and permanently a family. They had already bound themselves to each other many years before when Ruth and Orpah married Naomi's sons. But in this exchange, years later, Ruth recommits herself to Naomi for the rest of their lives. These two women who begin as in-laws become each other's primary chosen family. When we use a powerful word like family broadly, like for Ruth and Naomi, 
we only multiply these kinds of blessings of love and connection. And on the other hand, if we use a powerful word like family more narrowly, we risk excluding and hurting people whose families do not fit into that more limited definition. So I want to focus on one group who's affected by a more narrow definition of family. These are LGBTQ plus Israelis living in Jerusalem today. They are struggling with these narrow definitions of family, and especially if they've come from the ultra-Orthodox uh, communities from that kind of a background. And Jerusalem in particular, because I'll just say, the hills of Jerusalem are not the same as the beaches of Tel Aviv. And if you know uh, something about the different subcultures in Israel, you'll know what that means. So where to be out uh, as an LGBTQ person in Tel Aviv is, for most, I would say, quite comfortable. It's not always true in Jerusalem. So a little bit about the acronyms in Israel, because I'm going, I used the LGBTQ uh, acronym for Israel, but it's actually a little different. Does anyone know what the acronym is in Israel? Okay, so it's Latabim, which is a little different order, but it's Lamed, He, Tet, Bet. So the Lamed is Lesbiot, He, Homosexualim. Uh, the Tet is Transgenderim, and the Bet is Bisexualim. Didn't those sound completely different than they do in English? You, couldn't, you could barely tell. Those were totally new Hebrew words. Um, so la tabim is from that acronym. It's a little more elegant, I would say, than our LGBTQ. So you can say gayim, you can say queerim, or la tabim in Israel. And in Jerusalem in particular, back to the community I'm focusing on for us, they find their chosen family in this community center in Jerusalem called the Jerusalem Open House. It's the long title is Jerusalem Open House for Pride and Tolerance. Habayit hapatuach b'Yerushalayim le'ge'ava u'lesavlanut. And I was really lucky enough to join this community when I was living in Jerusalem. Not for the same reasons as everyone there, not because I didn't have an affirming loving family who supports me, but because I was so far away from them and I wanted to find, to find closer family. And I really remember it's a very special place that nurtures this kind of chosen family. From the moment I walked through those doors, I really felt like I was in my best friend's living room. Like, you know, that feeling, this is, this is my home or this is my extension of my home. They have um, these brightly colored sofas that line the walls, and they're worn in just exactly the way you would imagine a sofa being worn when people live and celebrate together and are comfortable together. So um, I'll always remember the, what it looks like. And the, like folding tables against the wall because they're about to set up for Shabbat dinner the next day, that kind of home feeling. You know, it, when we say community center, you could think it's... Um, I don't know what, what does a JCC feel like here in the United States. Sometimes it can feel like home, but usually it's more like an institution. This community center really feels like home. They've done a really good job with that. Um, and it's much smaller than a JCC. Um, I was invited to join a, all the programming that I wanted to, Rosh Hashanah dinner. Um, I joined a weekly women's discussion group where we got to have some of that family feeling of discuss, arguing and supporting each other, almost like a dinner table experience. And really that um, intangible feeling of walking in the door and feeling like this is family. They, um, they also, in addition, so they create that space where you can feel like family, they also protect like parents do. They also offer help. So they um, help LGBTQ people of all ages to find essential services like Doctors, if, if you could imagine, it's hard to find a doctor in Jerusalem who might, you might not know if they're going to be affirming or accepting. So making sure they offer doctors and therapists, um, things like um, anonymous HIV tests, it's very important to the community. In fact, I just want to highlight this past Thursday, the Jerusalem Open House sponsored and led the March for Pride and the, the 
Pride March for, the, for Jerusalem. Um, they called it the March um, Pride for Pride and Tolerance. And they also did this together with the Forum of Families and Supporters of the Hostages. So it was a joint um, march and had a different, a different tone than it has had, had, has had in years before. And I'm really proud that Bethel is a, a sponsor and support of their, uh, their march this year. Oh, and I wanted to show you this. So the rainbow kippah that I often wear, that you probably see me wearing most of the time, is actually from the Jerusalem Open House. It's a fundraiser that they ran uh, many years ago. Um, and so I, so I have a few more of them today. This is one. Um, and it supports them, and I can get more. If you want more rainbow items, if you want to donate or support them, please be in touch with me. Uh, I would love to facilitate that. My big goal for us today is I want our young people, and we have some of them in the room, but there are a lot more. I want our young people to know that we support their chosen families, and we will support their chosen families that they will one day build. Even if they look different from ours at family camp, that they should still come to family camp, I see Rocky supporting that. We're supporting you. Um, even if they don't look like everyone else's family at family camp, they should still come to family camp. They'll get a sign, we'll decorate their cabin door, and we'll welcome them as one of us, of course. Um, and one last example of, because I'm, I'm so proud of our community, so one last, it's a Cavell, which is uh, our Bethel preschool a few weeks ago, we have Grandparents Day. Well, so this is about expansive family. Oh, yes, Craig was there with Mira. We have grandparents, um, Craig, yeah, sorry, Craig was there. Um, and we, it's called Grandparents and Special Friends Day. So how many special friends do you think were there? Some, there were some, yeah. Um, and I thought, this is so wise and intuitive. Not every preschooler has a grandparent who's one available that day, who can, who is available, who lives nearby, who's well, maybe who's even alive, um, depending on how families are structured. And so what a good idea to make sure that everyone has a special person. Um, many preschoolers have relationships, important relationships with the adults in their lives. And thinking about family in that expansive way shows we, that we know and we appreciate that uncles and nannies and neighbors can be extremely important in a child's life. And they can participate in these adorable intergenerational activities just as well as grandparents. So I'm very proud and, and it was really so much love in that room. It was a beautiful thing to, to behold. On this Pride Shabbat, so closing us out, which, which falls in between Mother's Day and Father's Day. I'm thinking of Benny Zahav and his two mommies and, and, and being at family camp and Ruth and Naomi in our biblical story and creating their family multiple times and the chosen families of the Jerusalem open house and our preschool here at Bethel. Because if we can open our hearts to this really expansive idea of family, then our lives will only be filled with that much more connection and that much more love. So uh, happy Pride. And you can say that all month, happy Pride. You can say it always. And Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat shalom.